Jake Paul should be fighting a real fight. At some point, you have to fight a real boxer, Jake. I'm not going to respect Jake Paul until he faces a professional fighter. All right, if you've been waiting for the Jake Paul versus Tommy Fury fight, well, it looks like it finally is going to happen. Hey there. Are you curious about the rise of Jake Paul and how he went from just another social media influencer to a millionaire and on his way to becoming a billionaire? Well, get ready for the ultimate insider look at the untold truth behind Jake Paul's millions. This is a story of ambition, creativity, and determination. It wasn't always kosher, and some parts of his journey are pretty shady. But we all make mistakes, right? From making videos on Vine to his current empire. Sit back, grab some popcorn, and let's get started on uncovering the secrets of Jake Paul's success. Jake is currently getting ready to take part in his latest stunt. I, I mean fight with Tommy Fury, which has taken 18 long months to sort out. This latest YouTube boxing spectacle will take place on February 26th in Saudi Arabia with the Love Island star and the brother to boxing legend Tyson Fury being Paul's next opponent. The fight has actually been scheduled three times as the pair were first meant to meet in December 2021, but Fury was forced to pull out because of a chest infection and broken rib. Now that seems like a pretty good reason to be pulled out of a fight, but Jake still decided to poke fun at him. After that, the rescheduled fight was also canceled when Tommy ran into visa issues which stopped him from coming to the US. The latest fight, however, seems to be going full steam ahead. Both men will hop into the ring undefeated, with Paul facing the very first opponent who actually has a boxing background in his career. Previously defeating MMA stars Andrea Silva, Tyrone Woodley, and Ben Askren. It'll be interesting to see if Paul can keep up with the man trained in boxing, but you have to give it to Jake. He has confidence. Fake it till you make it. Jake is so confident, in fact, he uploaded a video of himself juggling three tennis balls, expressing the belief that he would knock Tommy Fury out. He also called himself the best boxer in the world and said that he would embarrass Tommy. If Jake could box as well as he could smack talk, he would probably take on Mike Tyson in his prime. Jake, also known as the problem child, has faced a lot of criticism for ditching YouTube for a career in the ring especially considering he has yet to fight an actual boxer. He has previously won against fellow content creators, retired MMA fighters, and basketball players, but none of them have had enough time to perfect their boxing skills. With that being said, Tommy's career isn't that much more impressive, with just two of his eight professional wins coming from opponents with more victories than losses. Getting back into YouTube drama, Jake has agreed to face off against his long-term rival, KSI, which will be a winner-takes-all bout. Yeah, that's right. Whoever loses will walk away with absolutely no money from the fight. Jake's brother Logan is no stranger to KSI, with the pair meeting in the ring twice before, with the British YouTuber coming out on top. Like many of the top YouTubers, including his brother Logan, Jake got his big break on Vine in 2013. By the time the app came to a sudden end, Jake had amassed over 5 million followers and 2 billion views on the app. Jake's immature and crazy videos were a hit with younger app users, which helped him land a role on the Disney Channel. The series Bizarre Vark was almost a spoof on Jake's life with his fame, with his character being similar to his online persona. On the show, Jake played Dirk, who would do dares. Of course, they were innocent, as it was Disney. But Jake thought he would take it one step too far by doing extreme pranks and stunts for YouTube, which resulted in him being fired in 2017. In fact, the TV station KTLA5 visited the West Hollywood neighborhood where Jake lived and discovered he was making his neighbor's life a living hell. All he did was almost burn his house down a few times. I mean, what's the big deal, bro? Luckily for Jake, he had already jump-started his YouTube channel and his notorious Team 10 gang at this point. In fact, by the time he was fired, he had already got 8.5 million subs, with the neighborhood antics helping him rake in the ad revenue to make up for his money lost through the Disney breakup. Selling merch has always been a great money-making opportunity for YouTubers, and Jake has fully taken advantage of the fact. His merch store sells things like t-shirts, hats, and stickers with his problem child nickname printed on them. Let's face it, it's cool to be the bad boy, and Jake is next level. Not only does Jake sell merch on his website, but he also sells it at his live events. In fact, at his live appearances, Jake often sells exclusive merchandise that can only be purchased in person. Because these products are limited edition items, they are highly sought after by his fans and can sell for hundreds of dollars each. These days, merchandise can be super simple to sell thanks to automated services and stores. This maximizes product sales that are usually hyped up during his YouTube videos to help make them sell out quickly. One of his most successful lines, however, is the Gotcha Hat merch. These hat designs were thought up after the Floyd Mayweather vs. Logan Paul press conference, which happened on June 6, 2021, when the two fighters met to hype up the fight. 
After Mayweather and his brother Logan went back and forth for a while, Jake decided to steal Floyd Mayweather's hat. This led to chaos breaking out. Jake was quickly stopped in his tracks by Mayweather and his security team, who then beat Jake up, leaving him with a black eye and damaged teeth. Jake, not shy to make money off any situation, decided to capitalize off the viral moment by creating the Gotcha Hat merch in record-breaking time. In fact, an hour after the brawl, Jake was selling Gotcha Hat merch on his Twitter, as well as, well as changing his username to his new brand name. This led to a huge influx of sales that could more than pay for his dental work he needed. Like all big YouTubers, Jake makes most of his money by monetizing his content through YouTube ads and sponsorships. In the past, Jake has shared that he can make $5,000 per video per month. The big money comes from sponsorships, which can earn him between $10,000 and $100,000 every month from a single video or post. While Jake might not be liked by all brands, there are many that fit in with his wild antics and young demographic. Jake Paul's ventures usually focus on a specific theme. Jake telling his young subscribers that education is an essential, as he didn't do well in school but still became rich and famous. This is why his own educational program is quite ironic, and unfortunately, turned out to be nothing more than quick money grab from kids who wanted to become social media stars themselves. Way back in 2017, Jake had an idea to educate the next generation of social media influencers, all for a low, low price of $7. Well, that price wasn't so clean cut, with the course actually costing $57 to unlock all areas. He called the course Edfluence, which was a service that he made up of a series of videos teaching people how to make it online. Unfortunately, a year after the service was released, the course was shut down, along with the website and the video content people had paid to unlock. What makes things worse is that during the run-up of the website closing down, the Edfluence Twitter account kept tweeting about huge sales. Yep. Basically, Jake was trying to rake in as much money as possible from the course before it was shut down. And then he and his team ran off with the money. The course did teach one very important lesson, however. If something seems too good to be true, it usually is. To make things worse, Jake also promised fans who bought the course that they would be part of a Team 1000, which was an extension of his Team 10 YouTuber lineup. Sadly, Team 1000 never happened, leaving the kids who believed they would be YouTube stars on their own with $57 less in their piggy bank. When it comes to boxing, Jake is often mocked, but that doesn't erase the fact that he was recognized by Forbes as one of the highest paid athletes who was under 25. He has also probably earned more in the last three years than some pro athletes have during their entire careers. This is pretty impressive, considering that he only went pro in 2020. Jake is certainly a master marketer, just like his brother Logan Paul, who knows how to draw a crowd, generate hype, and rake in the cash. There are not many good things people can say about Jake Paul, but that doesn't mean he hasn't done some good things for the community. For example, in 2021, Jake launched the most valuable promotions agency to help other athletes plan and execute ad campaigns on social media, generate original content for their channels, and promote content to their fans. The intention of the service was to help athletes make the money they deserve, especially in MMA, which Jake was vocal about when it came to the low payments of the fighters. This basically fused the two main areas of his career into one, sports and social media. Jake also makes a lot of money from his venture capital firm, Antifun. This company was launched with investor Jeffrey Wu, which was aimed to help up-and-coming creators and e-commerce stores that don't fit well with traditional funding opportunities. Since its release, Jake and Jeffrey have been ramping up the size of investments, with Anti-Fund also having famous investors like Mark Andreessen and Chris Dixon under their belt. Like his brother Logan, Jake has dabbled in the crypto space, not all of which has been legit. The internet detective CoffeeZilla was the first to uncover Jake's more shady crypto activity, with the YouTuber connecting Jake to the League of Sacred Devils, which was an NFT project linked to the scam ring behind other rug pull projects. Another NFT project that was profitable for Jake was Sticknix, which earned him over $1.5 million. Jake had failed to play his part in the venture, which led to his investors losing a lot of money when he walked away with his earnings. SafeMoon was yet another scummy NFT project that put Jake Paul in a bad light. CoffeeZilla managed to link a $190,000 payment from SafeMoon, which came from one of Jake's wallets. The same address was also linked to MILF, Token, and Yummy, two more disgraced NFT projects. On each occasion, Jake would create a new wallet to receive his tokens and then would cash out soon after uploading a promotional post to maximize investors from his fan base. Many of Jake Paul's videos have come under fire for being inappropriate for a young audience, since a lot of them focus on sexual and violent content. Now, this is somewhat of a problem, considering that his demographic is very young. 
For example, back in 2018, Jake uploaded a video called I Lost My Virginity, as well as appearing in videos with the famous adult actress Riley Reed. Now, that certainly isn't in line with his previous Disney image. Another instant that was met with criticism was when Jake tweeted that anxiety was self-inflicted. He then went on to say that you just have to let life play out and that being happy will give you answers. You know, Jake should think about a career in writing fortune cookies. To further put his foot in his mouth, Jake told his fans to chill your mind out and go for a walk if they feel anxious. Also in 2018, a clip of Jake resurfaced from Coachella 2015, where he freestyles a rap which included the N-word twice. The clip was initially met with upset, but soon after Logan's infamous Japan Forest video was uploaded, which took all the attention off Jake. Trust a good brother to take the heat. Another of Jake's many controversies involved his relationship and his two fake marriages, which he later referred to as being like the WWE, which were staged. The first phony wedding involved his ex-girlfriend Erica Costell, the same girlfriend who appeared in the Virginity Lost video. The second fake wedding was to Tana Manjou, which certainly paid off when it came to Jake's bank pal. From the beginning of the relationship to the wedding and the eventual breakup, the video and the streamed wedding resulted in an estimated $600 million in media value. Tana Manjou later came out and explained that the wedding was never actually legally binding and that the whole thing was invented as a way to stir up drama and make a profit. She also explained that the wedding event was a nightmare and that she had to attend a family emergency the very next day. Jake, not wanting to waste a honeymoon, decided to fly out anyway with a group of half-naked women. At least, Jake had a nice time. In 2020, Jake decided to host a huge party during COVID, which resulted in him being called out by the mayor of Calabasas. This, of course, got Jake trending online, which amassed him more ad revenue. As they say, there's no such thing as bad publicity. Just a few weeks later, the FBI raided his house and confiscated guns. This was believed to be connected to Jake's arrest during the riots that broke out after the death of George Floyd. In fact, that incident in itself became controversial for the YouTuber, as he was accused of looting when a video clip of him and his team was shared. In the clip, Jake can be seen laughing about people breaking into stores and helping themselves to their goods. Regardless of what you think of Jake, you must admit that he knows how to make money. The main reason for this is down to him being comfortable with doing one thing that many of us would cringe at embarrassing himself and his family for money. Jake is immune to embarrassment and has literally made a career out of it. For example, in his fight against Ben Askren, he gave his opponent a really weird and slightly sensual butt tap. He also did yoga instead of hitting the pads during the media workout. He knew this would make him look like a fool, but it only increased his view count on YouTube and social media. Not to mention stealing Mayweather's cap, which was a childish thing to do and got him beat up, but resulted in some of the biggest merch sales of his career. Jake doesn't care about perception. All he cares about is making more money, which has gained the respect of many people. As of 2023, Celebrity Net Worth places Jake at around the $30 million mark. That being said, Jake has claimed that his net worth is closer to $100 million, sharing that his boxing earnings alone have earned him 40 as of 2022. His $100 million net value comes from his substantial earnings on YouTube, his boxing ventures, his crypto investments, and his sponsorships. One such sponsor is Better, a micro betting app, which Jake believes will be a billion dollar business. Because of his revenue streams, Forbes published that Jake was the second highest paid YouTuber of 2022, just behind Mr. Beast, who earned around $45 million from the platform. The amount of hard work that Jake has put into his career in the last couple of years can be ignored. In fact, he has pioneered several viral areas of the internet and contributed to the popularity of YouTube boxing, thanks to his stunts and overdramatic personality. While Jake continues to play the bad guy and cook up new and inventive ways to generate money, he, along with his brother Logan, will not only continue to thrive on the internet, but could also be the first YouTube billionaires. Let us know if Jake Paul is a villain or hero in your eyes in the comments. And guys, if there's one thing you take away from this story, let it be this. Don't be afraid to take risks and chase your dreams. Who knows, you might end up a billionaire sooner than you think. Subscribe and ring the bell, guys, so we can keep creating minty, fresh content for you.